All right. So, Pablo gave me a great segue talking about the parts of basketball thing. That was beautiful. Uh, if you love basketball, you know the phrase ball is life. But what does this mean? Uh, my goal today is to share my story of how a game, basketball, saved my life. And hopefully, maybe my story will help motivate you to find purpose in this wild and unpredictable experience we call life. But first, let me take you back to one of my favorite memories. Uh, I was born the second uh, youngest of seven children. I was the clown of the bunch. I was the trickster, always getting into trouble. I was wild at home and wild at school, and my report cards often read off task behavior, hinders in class performance. And my grandfather, tall, strong, stubborn Texas man, watched me, creating havoc, and one day said to my dad, I don't want to tell you how to raise your son, but that boy needs a basketball in his hands. So when I was seven years old in 1997, my father surprised me on Christmas with a basketball hoop in my backyard and a Wilson leather basketball underneath the Christmas tree. And so on that cold December morning, I rushed outside in the blue black cold with my gloves and hat and puffy Iowa winter jacket and hurled my first shot to the air. Air ball. <laughs> After a few measly attempts and a frosty nose, I rushed back inside and asked my mom, Mom, how many shots do I need to take a day to be as good as Michael Jordan? She looked at me, smiled, and said, Son, if you take 200 shots a day, you can be the next Michael Jordan. Motivated and determined, I rushed back outside and began my journey to NBA starting. Fast forward an hour or so, and I came back in with my hands frozen, snot possibly running out of nose, and I sprinted inside and asked my mom a different question. Mom, you said if I shoot 200 shots, I can be as good as Michael Jordan, but what if I make 200 shots? A little stunned and surprised, my mother both doubted her youngest son, but she knew the game had begun. From what you heard in the introduction, I clearly never made it to the NBA. Even more obviously, I never became the greatest basketball player of all time. Yet with honesty, I can say my journey with basketball has provided me with the tools and lessons, and most importantly, the relationships to sustain me day in and day out. The phrase, ball, of, ball is life, or basketball saved my life, may sound dramatic, but let me try to explain. And please allow me to digress a little bit, as I compare five pillars of life, and then I'll eventually connect it to five pillars of basketball. From my own experiences of observing and working with kids of all ages as a teacher and coach for the past seven years, I can say with confidence that kids are wild and extraordinary tricksters, and simultaneously they have this unlimited and boundless potential. I feel that children are tricksters because the world is so abundantly overwhelming, and hiding or tricking adults is a way of avoiding reality. Thus, the challenge of teachers and parents is to provide an environment for children to fulfill this dormant potential. And I believe basketball or sport in general can fix this, because basketball provides five pillars of support. Answers, stability, structure, feedback, and friendship. I believe that if one can simplify their life in these five areas, they can increase the chances of joy, success, and overall fulfillment. So pillar number one, answers. Like most children, I wanted answers, both to the biggest questions, like what does life mean? Why can't I have dessert for dinner? And also kind of silly questions, like why do stars twinkle? Why is the sky blue? And sadly, I still have some of these questions. I'm not sure why the sky is blue. Maybe some of our science teachers know me yet. But uh, if children ask questions without any answers, they tend to fall into confusion, which can lead to a feeling of loneliness, isolation, or boredom if this is undirected or unsupported. Pillar number two, stability. As a child, teenager, or young adult, I often struggled and still struggle to control my emotions. And I see the same in my students and players today. Emotionally, I feel we are living in the most complicated of times. Like seriously, think about it. The social media reality, the advancement of the metaverse, the heightened depression rates in our teenagers, suicide rates, self-harming rates, the, the amount of drug abuse, ADHD and self-medication, and the general lack of engagement. I fear students are losing hope in the future. And if today's teenagers are anything like me, I can empathize with these feelings of being stuck in a system of rules and constant distractions or general rejection. And over time, these emotions can compound and become cynical and even more cynical. I'm shocked at how much self-doubt I see in my students. Thus, the sooner students and kids can learn to master their emotions, their mind, the more likely they are to succeed. Pillar number three, rules provide structure and structure provides hope. There are so many rules. Some you can break and some you can't. And depending on your age, race, sex, social class, rules seem to differ depending on who you are and where you live. So much that so, that for a kid, rules appear to be made simply to be broken. And in a world where rules are not the same for everyone, 
Injustices and comparisons begin to spread like a plague. And once a child or a teenager begins to compare themselves to others, then they feel that this world is built against them, and then as a result, hope slowly dissolves. Pillar number four, recognition and feedback. Children and adults wish to be loved and recognized for who they are. I don't believe this is an original or bold statement. However, so many students pass their days without any true recognition of their efforts, growth, resilience, courage, and compassion. All the effort it takes to live a day. And so often we go to bed hungry for warmth and love, wanting to know you did a good job and that you can do it again. Because life is not a 24-hour obstacle. Life is the day-in and day-out reality of discipline, hard work, patience, and faith. Remove these, and the, indivi and the individual and the system will collapse. And finally, pillar number five, relationships. We all need teammates, brothers, guardians, mentors, people who share our passions and understandings. Without them, I'm not sure anyone can grow to the truest and best self. Like the late, great Bill Withers said, Brother, lean on me when you are not strong, and I will be your friend. I will help you carry on, for it won't be long, so I'm going to need somebody to lean on. So how does this all connect back to basketball? Let's walk back through, one by one, each pillar, and hopefully you can see the connections. Number one, answers. You get what you give. My mother gave me the hope when she said I could be the greatest basketball player of all time. If I only made 200 shots a day, and since my mother never lied to me, I had no reason to not believe her. Soon my shot count rose from 200 a day to 400, 500, and eventually in high school I was taking close to 1,000 shots a day. Some people call this the law of attraction, or manifesting their thoughts, but I never loved these because they insinuate that things will just happen if you want them to. Please don't mistake this for an American dream speech, or if you just pull yourself up by the bootstraps and work hard and accomplish anything, because the reality is I didn't accomplish my dream. As, as, as true as I can say it, I failed. But in giving my best and chasing something I so deeply, truly loved, I received exactly what I needed. See, sport is one of the last remaining strong truths where your best is sometimes simply not good enough. Sport will remind you time and time again that your body and mind have limits. You can push these limits. You can train and improve and hire the world's best trainers, but in sport, giving your best doesn't mean being the best. And in this, I learned to embrace me for me. I was never going to be the next MJ, but I could try to be the best just as Lee. And from the first day I picked up the ball to today, my mother was 100% right. If you practice something every day, and you practice with effort, intelligence, and consistency, then you will manifest your born potential that is waiting to be expressed to the world. I am a state champion. I am a four-year Division I basketball player. I was a captain, and now I'm a coach, and I couldn't be more proud of it. Second, emotional intelligence improves through struggle and challenge. If you ever watch a sporting match, you know how common it is for players to lose their composure. My goodness, think about the World Cup. This guy got headbutted on national TV. There were fistfights in hockey. Bobby Knight once threw a chair onto a basketball court and marched madness. Fans were throwing food and drinks in an NBA basketball game recently. I've seen players fighting players and teammates fighting teammates, all under the pressure of the sporting game. There is no way to describe the feeling of playing in front of 15,000 people. The nerves, the sickness, knowing you're on TV and the world will judge you and call you names if you simply mess up. It's brutal. And when you remember that the majority of sports is amateur, we're talking about children and young adults. We're talking about 18, 19 year olds. I would get sick before I began my play. I would literally vomit sometimes. And almost every player I knew was superstitious for this reason. I would tie my shoes exactly the same way. I would have a mantra that I would repeat over and over and over again. I would eat the same food and I'd have the same stretching routine, all to try and calm my nerves and emotions to the best of my ability. Because those who could were usually the most successful. There were times I felt entirely and physically prepared, but for me the most challenging aspect of sport was between the ears. I was not born with the mind of a killer, the Mambo mentality. In fact, scouts would often say, Jesse, he's a great kid, but he's too nice to be truly great. And sadly, there's truth to this. The greatest athletes are very rarely the nicest individuals because it's so difficult to be both empathetic and compassionate when your job is to dominate opponents on a nightly basis. If you don't, you're ridiculed or called soft. But for me, the daily challenge of controlling my breath, <sighs> recognizing my own fears, performing in front of others, failing publicly on the big stage, being yelled at by coaches, parents, teammates, letting those I love down, letting myself down, and embracing these moments is not only helpful, but sacred and beautiful, 
is everything. It may feel good when everything is going your way, but these moments are pretty far and few between. So when you have them, celebrate. Enjoy the moment and get ready for the next. Because the truth is, controlling your emotions is not something once mastered, you never have to worry about it again. Instead, sport gave me the tools to recognize my emotions and regain control. And to this day, like right now, I'm using these habits to live a more healthy and sustainable life. Pillar three, rules. This one is a little more simple. Sports has rules and everyone has to follow the same guidelines. In basketball, when you walk into this 94 by 50 foot court, your gender, race, class, it doesn't matter, ideally. And so when the world around you seems steeped in chaos and justice and destruction, there's so much peace in basketball. I swear to you, the world could be crumbling, but on the basketball court, there's only one game, that game, and that's all that matters. Better yet, these rules are international and transcend our human oral language. The game is wherever court is. I've played in the poorest neighborhoods in Kentucky, on the beach in San Diego, in an all-black neighborhood outside Chicago, in the church hills in Santiago, at my grandfather's Baptist church in Brady, Texas, here in the Apple Tower in France, in China, Guatemala, Israel, Yale, Harvard, and all over the world. I know wherever I go, I will usually find the sound of the bouncing basketball and people who speak my language. Yes, these rules and lines are arbitrary, thanks to you, Dr. Mason, but when one is playing a sport and they reach the zone or flow state, it's the greatest feeling in the world because you are truly present. Pillar four, two more. Recognition. As a teacher, I always tell my students to learn for the sake of learning. And you probably told your children this as well. And as a coach, I tell my parents to never worry about their opponent, but to always focus on competing against yourself. To be the best you, to be the best team. And while I stand by these ideals, what I also feel is valuable to the growth of children and adults is feedback. So let me clarify. In school, students take tests and their papers so they can receive feedback from the teachers, and hopefully they will reflect on this and go back and try their best to improve. It, yet it works and it works and can work for relationships that feel the same is true. We have progress reports with professionals, we are observed by our peers, and in relationships it's important to have open and honest communication about ways we can support each other better. Yet the reality of all this is that life happens and emotions are involved and biases seep into our consciousness and especially in relationships. Intentions and tensions and alternate motives can twist and manipulate the truth of feedback and recognition. I guess what I'm trying to say is that in sport, recognition and feedback are brutally honest. If you mess up, you see it. If you fail to give your best, you're beat. If you run the wrong play or don't listen to coach, you're pulled from the game. Teams and coaches and organizations set expectations. When you fail to meet these, you hear about it, sometimes publicly. It's brutal. What this does for a player is it gives him personal accountability and continual feedback. And eventually, I promise, this will carry over to your own life. Finally, relationships. It's the most important one. All is life because of the people and the relationships you build. Like love. And hopes of not getting overly emotional, forgive me if I begin to cry, but to pay, but to pay back my teammates, coaches, parents, and grandparents, and now players, uh, it's an impossible task. The amount of love and support and guidance and forgiveness I have received because of basketball is humbling. And the same is true for anyone who decides to put on a jersey. The family of basketball is global, devoted, and eternal. Beginning with my teammates, you are the brothers or the sisters for life. To this day, I know I can call on any one of my hundreds of teammates, minus a few, and they will be there for me no matter what. We went through heaven and hell together, the blood, sweat, and tears, the road trips, the practices, the locker and dance-offs, which I want, the parties, the losses, and the championships, and because of that, we'll share a bond that is never broken. Now I'm going to their weddings, and I'm seeing them have their first children, and the bond only grows. Teammates are essential to individual success because competition brings out our best and worst. And I owe my greatest gratitude to my teammates for showing up to push me on my best days and picking me up on my worst. I respect individual sports and the mental fortitude it takes to be the world's greatest sprinter, swimmer, tennis player. But in my humble opinion, team sport is unparalleled. Life is about working together, coming together, failing together, succeeding together, and putting aside differences to fight for a common goal. To the elders, the old timers, the legends, the MJs and Kobe's, the ones who came before, regardless of whether you ever met them or if their poster was only ever on the wall, their passion, your passion and love for the game has motivated millions. 
I like doing this to gods because you all are worshipped. You give kids like me something to look up to, an impossible standard to dream of. And those bonds, those emotions are real, so thank you. I've even named my dog Kobe, so I can say his name every day. Kobe, I know these individuals are far from perfect and have made mistakes publicly. And I face these criticisms publicly, but for all their flaws as husbands, as fathers, as competitors, as humans, they have maintained their courage to keep going. And more than anything, I know they are examples of the single most important lesson I've learned from basketball. Never give up. Keep on keeping on, as my grandpa would say. The commercial, I want to be like Mike, is rooted in hard work. Keep on keeping on. What more can you ask for? To the coaches and mentors, the unyielding leaders, the backbone of the teams, these are likened to your bosses, government officials and leaders. You may not always agree with them, but learning how to listen and respect the coach regardless of your own personal biases has helped me immensely. And when you have a coach who loves and respects you, that's the best thing you can have in life. There's nothing better. So the coach man tag me, Coach Jones, a little side story. Coach Jones was literally texting me every day at 10, 8, 10 p.m. Where are you and what are you doing? Uh, he knew in college I would sometimes get into mischief, and so he wanted to make sure I was always on track, not putting myself or the team in danger. And that's love. It takes a village. In the village, there are role models. Now that I'm in a position of coaching, I see how it always comes back full circle. We all have a role to play in the development of the individual and our children. And so this is my closing. All is life, because the center is a circle, and everything must end where it begins. I dream of one day building a basketball hoop for my children, and helping them shoot their first shot. But if they don't love basketball or sport, that's fine too because there are so many other games to play. But the worst thing you can do is to never play or engage with life, to sit on the sidelines, behind the screen, or in the stands and watch while the world enjoys the struggles, the defeats, the emotional outbursts, the joys and the laughters, tears, and the fleeting moments of unity. This is what it means to be alive, connected to movement and purpose. So whatever game it is that calls to you, trust yourself. Go for it. Dance, kick, throw, leap, sing, draw, record, write, dunk, swing, it doesn't matter. But don't spend your entire life watching while the show goes on. Embrace the truth. Play the game. Believe that you have something to offer. You have a beautiful and wonderful gift, an expression or an idea to share with the world. Because there's no better feeling. There's nothing like it. To be alive, to play, is more than anything. It's life. Thank you.